And once you can get into this level of personalization and segmentation where you're catering and customizing your product offering to high moving to slow moving items to a customer and adjust your margins accordingly, that's when you get this both science and art of being able to influence top line growth and margin growth. And that's where you want to be when it starts to, when it comes to building your profitability around some of these controls and whatnot. Here are some highlights from a recent conversation I had with Tom Gale about how distributors are evolving away from their legacy profitability playbooks and building modern profitability playbooks that are powered by data and analytics. In this conversation, we talk about building capabilities around using pricing controls to prevent distributors from having to lower their prices. Two weeks ago when we talked, we discussed a profitability playbook coming into the fourth quarter. You know, my conversations with people coming out of conferences here are there's definitely a little bit of softening taking place across industrial markets, uh, construction as well. And uh, it's, it's even more critical in terms of the tailwinds that we had the past few years are starting. The winds are shifting, James. And so regardless of where you may be sitting, this aspect around pricing uh, and how pricing is managed going into the fourth quarter, going to 2024, is even more critical than the last time we talked. I'd, I'd like to form that as, as what we focus on this week. Yeah, that sounds great, Tom. It's a very timely topic. Uh, many distributors that we talk to, they're getting a lot of pressure from customers to lower prices or find ways to take costs out of their business. So very, very timely topic here, Tom, from what we're seeing. Yeah. And, and last time we talked specifically about leveraging data in new ways and, and really bringing that into, um, make sure that your teams are staying on the offense and not getting on their heels. It's really easy to do in this kind of environment. So I wanted to get some of your thoughts around how, what are some best practices around doing that? Yeah, Tom, that's, uh, you know, from our end, uh, data is what underpins, you know, the modern profitability playbook here. And last time we talked about enforcing or implementing, you know, enterprise profitability controls to help your teams kind of understand really where the organization was making margin, where it wasn't and how you can close and improve on some of those gaps. But really what we're seeing as the next step to that is building out another capability, which, you know, this entails, you know, using pricing controls to prevent lowering of prices. And, you know, before we get into some of the substance here behind that, Tom, we mentioned, you know, why some of this is so important as we move into a soft fourth quarter here in 2024, it could be you know, softening demand, it's really important that distributors kind of put some of these controls in place in order to maintain some of the, you know, historic level margins that they've had over the last two, three years. And, you know, I, I think of some of the research that we've done over the years, uh, we've benchmarked hundreds of distributors and surveyed thousands of distributor associates over the years. And the one stat that sticks into my head on this topic, Tom, is that over 60% of distributor associates that were surveyed, they say that they don't feel as if they have a differentiated competitive advantage. So what they tend to do when they're selling, if they don't have competitive advantage, is they tend to lean on price as a way to actually win deals or maintain business or relationships that they have. So as we move into challenging times like this, where there is price pressure, we're trying to encourage distributors to say, hey, give your teams the tools they need to actually defend the prices that you're currently capturing, because that will help you maintain margins and that will help you maintain profitability. So, so right now, James, I, I, what you're saying is it's, 
after after some of the gains that people have been able to get over the last year or two, it's really easy to start losing ground right now because uh, the, the the sales teams are 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 going to be really leery about pushing too hard at this point. Yes, that's exactly it, Tom. And it and this is it's all about playing offense to really capture more share. But there's a there's a bit of defense that has to be played here too from distributors to make sure that they can even maintain the customers that they have and, and the share that they have with them. What do those controls look like? Yeah, so Tom, we, we always start with customer segmentation. And this is a great place for distributors to start because what you wanna do here is you wanna be able to protect the gross margin that you have without curtailing top line sales. And to do that, you can dive into your first party data to really look at uh, your customers, segment them out. And generally what you'll find is that there's a mix of customers that you are both underpricing and there's another segment of customers that you're overpricing. So you want to figure out which ones fall into those two buckets and then you want to adjust price accordingly uh, to be either be able to win more share with those segments or to protect some of the share that you have if you think that there's encroaching competition coming through. But really, once you identify these gaps, you know that's when you can start to really take some of these uh, pricing adjustment measures. You know, One thing that we find and always warn distributors about is don't spend too much time with the long tail of your customers, at least on the onset here. There's far more opportunity to gain by focusing on your large customers and your mid-sized customers. So the head and the neck, not necessarily the tail. If you've already done the head and neck, yeah, go into the tail, but the, the amount of impact you get from the tail, just it may not be there right out of the gate. So definitely focus on some of your bigger gains there. How do you identify the underpricing versus overpricing? Yeah, you can look at it, Tom, just from if, if your customer, based on their volume, is getting the best price for some of the products that you would actually offer. And you can start to adjust from there. And it gets into more, we'll say customer level pricing at that point, uh, who's getting the best price. Some of your long tail may not be getting the best price, but they could have more potential if you will. But yeah, you know, once you really, you know, start to identify those uh, aspects, we really move beyond customer segmentation into advocating for holistic pricing to where you're looking at not just the customer segments by size, but you're looking at them by potential. And this is where it gets into, you know, using maybe some third party data to identify if this customer is buying everything they potentially could be from you. So understanding really where, what the market demand is both for that customer and for that product could really help you identify and adjust your strategies in working with individual customers based on not just what they're purchasing from you today, but also what they could be purchasing from you. So that customer who may only be using you as the second or third choice uh, distributor for some of their products, you want to move them up uh, and be able to capture more share wallet from them. And your, your best dis distribution pricing departments today, they are doing this at a high level of uh, effectiveness. They have become really, really good at this and that's how they ultimately steal share regardless of market conditions. They're growing above market by really diving deep into this level of data and making sure that their teams are effectively executing on this. So it's really, uh... It, it, it sounds like you're describing a, a matrix or a cube where you're taking a look at both the opportunities for those second or third choice customers. You're probably looking at size, history there, and, and some of that opportunity for expansion. And at the same time, looking at some product categories that might also be uh, add-ons, uh, things like that, to, to do some deeper penetration as well. That's exactly it, Tom. And there are a lot of distributors out there who will say, there's no way you can grow overall margin without hurting top line. And it is absolutely false because you certainly can do both. As long as you are 
you know, really understanding where you can capture some of these gains and you're giving your teams the right amount of intelligence and tools to go in there and grow these accounts. So we are seeing something very different than what we hear back from a lot of distributors. Yeah, and it sounds a lot of this comes back to just basic focus. If you can identify where your highest yields are gonna be, and like you said, don't get caught up in that sand trap of those smaller customers where uh, your salespeople might be a little bit over-focused on. Yeah, that's exactly it, Tom. Now, that it, this is a great place to start, Tom, is that customer segmentation. And we do a lot of work in that area. And, you know, some distributors are more advanced than others in that area. But if you really want to get more advanced beyond just customer segmentation, that's when you can start to layer in uh, product segmentation data. And this is this is where you start to see your world change from what's possible from both growing top line and from maintaining your margins and profitability with customers. And it entails a very similar process. Use that customer segmentation data as your foundation, but now start to really segment your, your products by A's, B's, C's, D's. And you, what you're looking at here is your, obviously your high moving items, uh, are the A items, your slow moving items are your D items, but you're looking to find ways in which you can actually start to mix and match your high moving items with some of your larger customers or some of your customers who have a lot of potential. And, you know, I'll give an example here of similar industry, right? You look at like grocery stores, right? How they actually will handle both customer and product segmentation here, you know, when, when most people walk into a grocery store, they might have 20 items that they buy regularly. It's on top of their mind. You know, these are the essentials like milk or nowadays, Tom, it's almond milk or whatever, which one of the 50 variants they have on, on milk, bread, eggs. Uh, I'm sure essential in your house, Tom, is uh, probably some nice high quality beer or some wine. In mine, it's definitely a, a nice bourbon, but these essentials, these stores know what you are buying and the good ones are using data to really price those core items at a level that's gonna be very competitive. But everything else that you buy during your shopping visits, whether it's you know digitally or in store, they're gonna make more margin on some of those items, right? As add-on items and they price each accordingly to actually maximize their margin, but also sell you more. So by using this data, if you buy, say, this chocolate hazelnut almond milk regularly, they're going to hit you up with offers later, get you in the store, get you into that buying mode again to where they can increase the frequency of it. But when you take this grocery store analogy, you know, distributors, B2B distributors, especially in the industrial and commercial construction space, they're, they're just starting to really layer this into their business from a capability standpoint. Because what might be an A item to a distributor ship holistically may not be an A item to a customer of that distributor. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to personalize what an A item is for the customer, not just for your business as a distributor. And once you can get into this level of personalization and segmentation where you're catering and customizing your product offering to high moving to slow moving items to a customer and adjust your margins accordingly, that's when you get this both science and art of being able to influence top line growth and margin growth. And that's where you want to be when it starts to, or when it comes to building your profitability around some of these controls and whatnot. Yeah. I, I think you must have skimmed some of my, my data because I live in an area where there's uh, 532 varieties of oat, <laughs> almond, and, and just about virtually every other kind of, of, of milk. So, uh, but no, if, you know, from the consumer experience, certainly we've all, all had that experience, whether it be a Costco or some other retailer that's been very sophisticated in uh, really isolating and doing their research. And you go in and say, oh, 
hey, that's, you know, gosh, that's great. And they, they are, are just, they were Zen masters at the pricing because they know uh, that they personalized it very much to the people that they know are walking in that front door. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, Tom. And at, at the foundation of all of this is data, right? And from what we've seen, to be able to do both customer and product level segmentation, overlay the two and really stratify solutions around it, you need, you need data and you need a good mix of data too. And the beauty of this is distributors are already sitting on a gold mine of what I'll call first party data. It's their customer data, it's their transactional data, but really where this becomes more robust is when you can start to overlay data from other sources. So I'll use third party data as another uh, layer to bring in here and that could help you quantify market demands at both a product level and at a customer level. And this will give you potential and this will give you really transparent intelligence that you can use to go after individual customers. Uh, you can go after different territories. You can go after you know, key customers by sales agent. So there's a lot of ways that you can use and arm your team with that third party data. But even beyond that, one of the interesting things that we've been seeing emerge even more, Tom, is the use of second party data. And to us, this is more of data that you would get from some of your suppliers. And this is where, this is, this is untapped for, in large part from what we're seeing because it's, it's very new to where manufacturers are trying to share more of their data with their key distributor partners to do aggressive market development and to capture higher uh, margins around key product categories. So they're sharing data such as not just leads, but like customer buying intent signals, uh, information requests, what customers are doing on their websites and some of their properties and things like that. And that's where distributors can combine first party, third party, and some of the second party data to really put together a complete picture of where there could be additional opportunities to actually capture top line and bottom line. And, and I, I, I want to have a follow-up uh, conversation with you, James, in, in terms of talking about this, you know, point of sale in terms of shared data between suppliers and their distributor partners has been in place for a long time, but the, the customer center, there's a, there's a whole, other set of layers there that uh, can just build even deeper partnerships in terms of uh, those insights and, and a lot more transparency in terms of what real time is happening in the market out there. So that's definitely a follow up on our list to have. And speaking of transparency and the impact of data, that, that's the reason why your team and my team on December 6th, are, we scheduled a joint virtual data analytics summit that be about five to six hours of content. Uh, I'm really excited about how that's coming together and the content that we're putting together for that. We, we did a profitability summit in the summer. This one is really more growth and sales focused. We are going to be talking more about customer stratification and cost of serve analytics, also supplier stratification, some of the channel optimization pieces in terms of those uh, those partnerships and, and the power of that in terms of shared analytics around that. And finally, the revenue growth pieces of this. And one of the key things that have, has emerged and we talked about too at the last session was really the aspects of the integrated sales channel, the digital with the more of the hybrid sales models that so many uh, people are adopting today. So uh, you're going to be very much contributing to that. Yeah, and, and, and we're looking forward to that event, Tom. And, and it's it's exciting to us because there's a lot of new people that are coming into this topic of data analytics. And historically, it would be relegated to either a finance department or a business intelligence department within both manufacturers and distributors. But we're finding that data is such a universal topic, Tom, to where there is so much enterprise level data if you look across your organization that can fuel new ideas and data-driven programs for increase in performance and revenue and profit. So we're seeing the likes of CEOs get more involved in these conversations, CFOs, 
uh, VPs across the board, people that are running either different branches or different functions of the organization, really getting empowered by using data more in some of the strategies and programs that they're implementing. So if you're out there listening to this and you're not leveraging data to your, to its fullest potential, show up to this event because there's going to be, I guarantee, new things that you're going to learn as to how a lot of different functional groups are using data across the organization, both in manufacturing and in distribution. Our, our real orientation around shaping this program on December 6th is that this is very much today a team effort in, in the elements of that. The more every member of that team has a grounding in some of the best practices and how data analytics are being applied across an organization, it, it's going to lift everybody's capabilities in the organization to just accelerate their ability to leverage that and, and move the organization forward. We really are in this time where it's, it's moving very quickly. And I, I, AI, absolutely, while not being implemented in a lot of distribution companies in strong ways today, it's definitely the, the fuel out there, the fire. You know, what's, what's interesting to me is if you take a look at, uh, you know, 10 years ago, sort of the fuel to this whole digital transformation, it was more fear out of uh, what Amazon and Amazon business was going to do. This time around, around data analytics, and I feel like we're right in the middle of this and just it's about to launch, is it's, it's a little bit of fear, but it's, I think it's a lot more of hope and opportunity of, of what AI and really the data engineering offer is going forward for distribution companies. Yeah, well said, Tom. Really looking forward to it. We'll talk soon. Thanks, James. Great. Thanks a lot, Tom. Thank you for watching today. If you'd like to receive more insights on this topic, feel free to reach out to MDM directly at mdm.com or us here at Dorn Group at dorngroup.com. Be sure to follow us on LinkedIn.